Chapter 1 This chapter looks at the implications of digitalist information. There is an accumulation of memory, both backwards and forwards in time. This accumulation, where fact and fiction can be difficult to differentiate, is like a cultural imperialism that moves towards the filling out of all interstices. The resulting monument of virtual data represents an enormous resource that must nevertheless inevitably contain the memory of degeneration and the degeneration of memory. Chapter 1, Virtual Memory In Meme Commemorationum, Luke, 22 19 Neither real nor imaginary, the world of digital simulation has brought into existence another category. That of the virtual. The virtual exists without really existing. It exists potentially, condensed in the possible. In this sense the virtual is not the opposite of the real but rather an artificial tangent that can run parallel to what is here, what is manifest. The digital image is theoretically non-degradable and therefore absolutely permanent and can bestow this quality onto any images that undergo the transformation. Films, photographs, and paintings can now all be saved for posterity in digital form. What might be the implications of this memory overload? It seems likely that how we generate, disseminate, and access memory will become more the issue than remembering. The mark of the encyclopedia which is its fragmentation of all knowledge into little pieces so arranged that they can be found one at a time, points only to the burlesque of fiction, to the incompetence of fiction itself which is endlessly arranging things. Donato, The Museum's Furnace, Textual Strategies, P215 Never has a society accumulated so many vestiges, so many documents and archives. Things, products, works, from the most banal to the most extraordinary, from the most ancient to the most recent, everything and anything can now be conserved and categorized in the public interest. The march of imperialism is on its way to constructing an endless monument. An universal memory whose building blocks are to be cemented with the digital accumulation of all memory. Another significant paradigm is the virtual museum. This is not a museum in the traditional sense but more like a memory theater where an interactive meta-architecture embodies audio-visual information in a form that hybridizes the functionality of a museum, a library, and a game arcade. Furthermore the extension of such virtual museums onto the net creates a ubiquitous and universal space of access to informational and artistic structures. Shaw, Art, Science, and Interactivity Nothing is, both in principle and in effect more modern than a memory constructed in the public interest. Nothing is less pertinent than to see in this a resistance to obsolescence, offered and controlled by the industrial society, or a poetic reminder of mortality. There is not, on the one hand, a noble collection of sacred relics and on the other a modern consumerism that is vulgar and triumphant. That which enters into a public memory is separated not only from its past, but also from the present in that it becomes memorable. It becomes indirect, it has lost its continuity and implies simultaneously a memorable past for the present and a present that remembers. It represents a consuming of the past but also of the present. The contemporary object that enters a public memory becomes the memorable present, as opposed to the transient present. This process of self commemoration magnifies the present whilst projecting a memory of the present into the future, but rather than creating a suspension of time, this desire to conserve becomes a celebration of the ephemeral. Whatever is preserved digitally will act as an exponential record of the passage of time. A frightening idea if we take into consideration Baudrillard's assertion that. Celebration and commemoration are nothing but the soft forms of necrophagous cannibalism, the homeopathic form of killing us softly. And that, history itself has become interminable. Baudrillard, Strike of Events History is itself historical. A historical fact, if it is regarded as a historical fact, is itself already conceptually caught in the web of history. The politics of memory do not act to preserve either the past or the present but are concerned with the structuring of a linear representation whereby the manageable and manipulable segments of the past, present, and future are continually brought up to date for a shifting present in fictitious time. Collective memory is creating modernity, like a Frankenstein's monster, 
constructed out of a collection of parts that create a fractured whole end. This deregulation of events no longer raises or incites critical consciousness, only singular objective irony. Baudrillard, Strike of Events This construction has its parallels in the arts and is like Narcissus attempting to touch his likeness and distorting his reflection. Collage, cut and paste, scratch are accepted forms for the contemporary artist and a just representation of the contemporary media environment where the TV reigns supreme as a window onto a world of disjointed shadows that nevertheless pass as coherent even when clicking a remote control that allows for a random browsing through a plethora of broadcasts. All that remains are current events, a kind of cinematographic action, an auction, i.e., the price tagging of the event in an overbid of information. Simulation is precisely this irresistible unfolding, this linkage of things as if they had a meaning, so that they are no longer controlled or regulated except by artificial montage and nonsense, one gets the impression that events are hurled headlong in isolation as they abruptly get diverted to the peripheral void of the media that remains relentlessly bent on filling up all interstices. We are unquestionably indebted to this physically pleasing sensation, the sentiment that collective or individual events are plunged into a hole of memory. Baudrillard, Rise of the Void Towards the Periphery As Burroughs puts it in textual terms, I think the novelistic form is probably outmoded and that we may look forward perhaps to a future in which people do not read at all or read only illustrated books and magazines, or some other form of abbreviated reading matter. To compete with television and photo magazines, writers will have to develop more precise techniques producing the same effect on the reader as a lurid action photo. Creative Camera 215, 1982 Perhaps to grab the attention of an increasingly juvenile, well-informed, distracted and apathetic, yet avid, Pavlovian consumer who has learned to salivate at the dinner bell rather than the dinner. Their impotence and their fascination with imagery make them ideal victims of the information state. Hakim Bey, The Information War Reduced to binary circuits of on and off and the formalized language of algorithms everything seems possible but sanitized. The mass media environment keeps us at a comfortable distance from the brutality and impertinence of the world and computers are helping to surround us in an artificial world that is increasingly intangible. A digital environment exists outside of real time and space unlike its human generators and interpreters. The breadth of possibilities offered by a simulated model depends on the limits of the model itself because it exists within defined systems and laws. A fractal simulation program for generating an oak tree will not produce bamboo even if the program allows for an infinite number of more or less probable variations. If we want to push the model beyond its limitations, the laws imposed upon it must be transgressed. The programming must be changed and another virtual world is created. I have seen computer-generated models but I have yet to hear of computer-degenerated models. Degeneration is conceivably subject to a greater diversity of influences age, the weather, the worm. On the net, there is no art of this kind, yet it has had no time to develop a notion of the other, the vanishing point of which would be death. The algorithms used by the engineers and artists who are working more or less secretly on the orders of the Sursa Telecom, have been copied from the biological, life form, EULA, s translated into mathematics. For art it would be worthwhile to attempt to invent algorithms of, self, squandering, of faltering, of ecstasy, and of, self, destruction, in full recognition that there might not be much to see or hear, these would be turned into sounds and images. Zielinski, Seven Items on the Net There will always be the argument that humankind, in its biological mortality, can only access the spiritual through the discourses of decomposition, carnal lust, and chance. It is ultimately the human element that will bring into the digital sphere the richness of physical experience and the perversity of culture and language that is subject to older, more expansive, and compelling algorithms. New Skin for Old Ceremonies The beat of our life is a relentless drive to discharge our forces and things left behind. Our bloodshed, breast milk, menstrual blood, vaginal discharges, and semen are what is sacred in us, surrounded from time in memorial with taboos and proscriptions. Bodies festering, ruins crumbling, extend the zone of the sacred across the moldering hull of our planet. Lingus, 
Abuses 1994. To master such diverse complexities digital simulation will have to transform itself into an infinite variety of ephemeral hybrids. Seen from this perspective the expansion and development of the virtual world is likely to be piecemeal, bit by bit, much like Kafka's story of the Great Wall of China. There will be an inevitable interplay between the real and the virtual environments as the evolution of the one affects the perception of the other. As with dreams and memory the digital environment represents an infinite space that we will fill out with the baggage of an accumulated and evolving real. As with dreams and memory the imagination should be able to explore the digital environment for ideas. To be present is an act which requires a decision of existence, like a jump out of the dormancy of imminence. All representations are sleeping presences. A representation is not a new presence, it is only a remediation. All representations are weak, they all lack presence. However, by pointing so clearly to the void they reveal, representations, and especially virtual representations, may give us back the nostalgia for presence, the taste for the act of presentation, the sense of indicable awakening to being here and now rather than there and ever. The present is, as its name indicates it, a gift that we should always struggle to deserve. Quo, the present of presence.